Well, hello everyone. My name is Josh Terrell. I'm the CEO of the Wyoming Business Council and welcome to another one of our podcasts for What's the Point, where we talk about economic development in Wyoming. Today, I have the pleasure of talking with Amber Power, who's a member of the Wyoming Business Council team. Amber, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, yes, I am very lucky that I got to join the Wyoming Business Council team about a year and a half ago. Um, I've been working in the space with communities, working with strategic planning, doing a lot of community engagement for several years. Cool. But now I get to work with an amazing team and uh, help the communities across the state. Awesome. So, so tell me a little bit about community leadership and engagement, because it's a little bit of a different title than you were probably even hired for. Um, so, so tell me a little bit about that and how that came about. Yeah, well, I inherited that title. I think you decided that's what it would be. And I was really intrigued when I saw that come mm -hmm. across my desk um, and wanted to explore that opportunity more um, simply because communities are amazing in the state. They have um, amazing skill sets, they have uh, amazing leaders, and they have an incredible passion for doing what's best for their citizenry. So when we talk right. about community leadership, it's already there. It's right. already built in. They right. already have um, all of the people that they need and just being able to work with those people and help support them in the way that they feel they want to take their communities right. um, is a real pleasure and honor. Yeah. Um, and that's where the engagement comes in, because then you also have citizenry and those informal leaders like we see mm -hmm. are so incredibly important right. in the quality of our community. So that's where the engagement is incredibly important to make sure that they also have voices and they also have opportunities around the table to make their communities exactly what they'd like it to be. Okay. Okay, good. So, so you kind of described two different groups of leadership mm -hmm. and engagement and and we, of course, have the typical structure, which is the, you know, there may be the governmental structure within a community and that defines the leadership and that's mm -hmm. there. Um, still in Wyoming with our 99 communities, you still have quite a bit of, of variation in the, the type of leadership that there are, the yeah. number of leaders that there are, and the number of people who are um, working with many hats. Right, you might have a smaller community that has somebody that has like three different hats to wear. Do you have you experienced that? Oh yeah, I think yeah. we all have, right? Yep. And maybe we've even been those people. Yeah. Right. Right. Because we are small, but we are mighty. And mm -hmm. the cool thing about that is that we have then more opportunity okay. to enact the change that we want to see. So yeah. we have a lot of skill sets. We are used to being flexible. Mm -hmm. We're used to taking on more than what maybe other um, maybe people that have just one hat um, might usually. We see how things coexist in right. certain spaces. We see where things overlap, where there's those synergies. Yeah. Um, and I think we actually are a little bit more powerful because of that. Okay. Um, I think that we have a lot more opportunity when we start to utilize some of those things. But yeah, we all have different hats, right? Yeah. And especially yeah. in those smaller communities, yeah. that just makes it sometimes harder. Sometimes harder, right? Yeah. Because of bandwidth, maybe. So then let's talk about that other group, the kind of the, the leaders without titles, we'll call them, right? In your yeah. community, everybody knows those people who are, you know, involved in a whole lot. They're making things happen yeah. and they're doing it because they, you know, really feel a passion for their community. They don't necessarily have a title to do that. And, you know, talk a little bit about them and about that group. And then how do you kind of put it all together? Those are incredible people because those are really what fuel, I think, a lot of the good things that we see in our community because it comes strictly from passion, yep. dedication, and mm -hmm. hard work. So it's yeah. not part of their day job. Right. But when we talk about leadership in communities, a lot of times you'll be talking with um, community members and they won't count themselves as leaders, but these right. are our coaches for our, right. our Little League teams. Right. These are the people who sit on boards for nonprofits mm -hmm. or donate their time at the pet shelter yep. on the weekends or um, run kids every which way and right. volunteer in classrooms. Right. Those are the bread and butter for capacity in our communities. And right. they are enacting change in very real and important ways. Right. So if we have leaders that we would traditionally think of as um, more of the traditional leaders, right. so the people that are elected, the people that own, you know have those jobs that might have that particular title. Right. If we can get them engaged and working with 
the community as a whole and those non-traditional leaders, mm -hmm. that's where you start to see the capacity multiply in hugely impactful ways. Okay. You start to see those projects get done yeah. because you have more people that are willing to participate. You have more people that have those skill sets, the knowledge, the know-how, the time, right. and the commitment yeah. because they're already bought into it. Right. So if we can figure out how to really craft something where they're working together mm -hmm. and that's where hopefully we come in with some of, right. of just the processes that we yeah. can help with those um, discussions and get all of those people to the table, we start to see change or we start to see an impact in a much more visible and valuable way. Okay. So, yeah, so they kind of bring the, they, they bring the, leadership and they bring the their engagement and and what you're really mm -hmm. working to do is is help them with a framework or a process so that mm -hmm. they can make that more effective and and really kind of make an impact maybe faster or bigger or whatever it might be yeah. so can you tell me a little bit about some of the communities that you visited you don't have to necessarily get into the the specifics or nitty-gritty but maybe some of the situations you've been in and how you've been able to really kind of do just that right just make that. it make it more efficient or effective you know it's really interesting because I've been in this space for quite a while. And um, so I've worked with a lot of communities even prior to my work at the Business Council. But since I joined the Business Council, I spent a lot of time just talking to communities right. and what works and what doesn't work and what their needs are. Okay. Um, we have incredibly smart, incredibly capable people, mm -hmm. right, across yep. the spectrum in all of our communities. But what we're hearing is just figuring out what's the first step. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Getting the people to the table, starting the conversation yeah. and figuring out what is that first step. Now, obviously, planning is notorious. Right. For we spend all of this time, we spend all of this money, we create this really cool plan that sits on yep. the shelf and nothing ever happens. Yeah. But it's really hard to translate that into action, especially mm -hmm. when we have so many people. Right. right. So um, what we do is sit down with a community. Um, there are a couple communities that we've done this with on, a, you know, various different levels. Mm -hmm. um, make sure and we want to be really helpful to them to bring the people to the table that have a buy-in in the process that want to be at the table. Right. Right. That have some sort of authority to make some decisions, changes, funding, yeah. resources, right. all of that, make that commitment. Um and then we want people who have that passion and those right. skill sets right. to all sit down together um, and then craft their common vision. And the cool thing about it is that we then give them a process of how to begin that discussion, getting all in the same boat so they're all rowing in the same direction, and then crafting some next steps. So what does that look like? So it may be a pilot project. Okay something small where they just start momentum, mm -hmm. right? And then at that particular time, maybe they take a look at it and say, you know, we're veering a little off course. That's maybe not what we want to do. Let's shift. Mm -hmm. Let's go in another direction. But if we help them with that process, they're fully capable of deciding their own direction. Right. They're fully capable of identifying resources, of working together. We just kind of help provide the framework and then just get the heck out of their way a right. lot of the time. So, so I, want to, I want to dive in on that a little bit. The, the idea that we provide a, a framework, mm -hmm. I want to kind of drill down on something that <clears throat> we see a lot. It happens all the time. Uh, we do it as humans. The natural reaction is, I, I've heard of a problem. I'm going to throw a solution at it, uh -huh. right? And, and so one of the things that we've really, I think, worked on is, is spending a lot more time solving the, or looking at the problem and defining the problem and kind of going back to that old adage of, you know, uh, a problem well stated is half solved, right? Oh, like sure. spending a lot of time up front trying to really deduce what the problem is and what the constraints on right. that problem are rather than throwing out solution after solution that may or may not work, right? hundred percent. Okay. And I love the fact that you say that we all do that because we all do that, right? right? And I think it's just getting something done and moving forward is, is always a good thing. And I don't know that there's necessarily a bad thing with about, you know, about moving forward. There's some movement at least. Mm -hmm. However, if we can identify the problem, okay. um, base it on some real data. Right. So we're looking at information that 
comes from statistics, I know it's actually a good thing, right? Yeah. To yeah. use those statistics. Yeah, data is a, data yeah. is a really helpful tool. It right? is. <laughs> right. It's not yeah. always dry and it's yeah. not just something you have to you know, kind of jump through for a degree, but yeah. there are some benefits for utilizing data right. that's specific to your community mm -hmm. um, that you get an idea of where you are, kind of a, a snapshot. Then if we look at assets and what we have available to us in any given space, because all of our communities are varied and different, yep. really understanding what we have available for assets, what makes us us as our community. Um, it could be the soccer coach right. is a really incredible asset to our community because right. that soccer coach also helps mow the lawns on the soccer field or whatever that might look like, yeah. right? Um, so identifying those assets that are really specific to our communities. And then we also look at the constraints. Okay. So if we know or we have a vision of where we'd like to be, mm -hmm. what's standing in our way? Okay. And identifying those almost like a scientist would, mm -hmm. right? And I think that um, that's really hard and sometimes that's intimidating right. to have that discussion. Um, and I'll just speak for myself. A lot of times I think I already know what the issue is before I walk in the room and have already made that decision. And I'm just waiting for everyone to catch up with me at that point. Um, mm -hmm. But that's not always the case, right? right. There are a lot of um, things that I might not be seeing. Right. So having the people at the table sit down and really go through that process and understand, first of all, where we are and then help us really identify what that problem is. Yeah. It saves headache, it saves resources, it saves time, it saves um, people getting frustrated right. with the process mm -hmm. and people then stepping back because they don't believe because it they, works. They don't believe it works. The, the other part of it is that, you know, while, while we're trying to define a problem and that we feel like, hey, if we can work with the community to sort of help them through this framework, it helps mm -hmm. define the problem really well. Mm -hmm. Think about the assets you have, where are those gaps, and then how do we fill them, mm -hmm. you know, all of that. That's, that's all really good, but um, you mentioned that planning, you know, is this thing that people tend to get a report and they put it on a shelf. And I, I wonder if, and this isn't true for all planning or all reports, mm -hmm. but in a lot of cases, because they don't have the ownership and they weren't the ones really doing mm -hmm. the work, that one, there's no ownership, but two, once the planners leave, the tools weren't left behind. Yeah. They, they weren't ingrained in that process. And so can you talk a little bit about how you get people involved so that the next time maybe somebody wants to do a planning session, Amber doesn't have to be there. Right. Somebody else could, from the community, could run that. Is that, is that part of our deal? Well, it is. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Okay. Um, so part of our deal is the capacity building. Right. And I've heard you say many times, our job is to work ourselves out of a job, yep. right? And the really cool thing about the people I get to work with is we take that seriously, right? Right. Yep. So it's not just this program, it's all of us. We seem yep. to take that very, very seriously. Yep. So when we go into, and I'll just speak for myself at this point, but when we go into a community or we're working with a customer, mm -hmm. our job is to provide a process to help them understand it, yep. walk through it, provide the support. So if we have the expectation that they're going to go from A to Z, we also have the responsibility to provide them with the tools to go right. from A to Z. From That's just part of the deal, yep. right? Yep. So if we can then provide them with the tools and those tools are understanding the process and having them walk through it, but that's why that buy-in Mm -hmm. is imperative. If you don't have the people at the table that want to be there, you might as well not be there. Right. 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 So if we provide them with the tools, the process, resources, connections, support, even a, you're doing a great job. I yeah. know it looks kind of dismal right yeah. now, but wait till right. next week, whatever yeah. they need as a community yeah. that we can provide to support them then they already know it, right? right? Then they can replicate it. And right. that's the goal is to work ourselves out of that job. Right. So, so that you, you mentioned a, there's a part in, in every project or every process where things are not working, right? They're not coming together. There's a time and, in, in, you know, 
every day of school or every a week at work where have you're you like, have you been in my house lately? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. right? Like okay. that's uh -huh. that's just a, that's a common thing. Yeah. But but uh, but talk a little bit about that and how we help or how communities can work through it, should work through it, do work through it because it's it's inherent in every project or every work. Hundred you know? percent. So as a Wyoming girl, the first thing I'm going to say is we have a lot of grit yep. Yep. in our blood, yep. right? Whether we were born and raised here or whether we've adopted it, yep. we tend to have a lot of grit. Okay. So I think that just innately, as long as we stay focused, mm -hmm. you know, we tend to maybe work through those a little bit. Right. Um, however, just like anybody and everybody, mm -hmm. um, if we don't always have the answer, the really cool thing is that somebody probably has either been through it, somebody's going through it. So that's where that engagement comes in. Okay. Right? Yep. So if, we're, if we have a particular project, and this is the bad thing about us too, we're also incredibly independent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Asking that's, for that's help. That's good and bad, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 Um, asking for help is always the most comfortable yep. thing, right. but that's our role, right? Right. So if we don't immediately have an answer, mm -hmm. then our role is to help find the answer. Now, that doesn't mean that we do that for mm -hmm. communities yeah. because, again, communities are completely capable. Right. We're just here to help facilitate, facilitate. the process and yep. add just a little bit of support. Yeah. The other really cool thing about it is that those moments I always look at as good. Yep. Because maybe that means you need to rethink what you're doing. Right. And the, the word maybe is really important there, yes. right? Yeah. So, so talk a little bit about that because you're going to hit that and the desire is to, to jump to some new shiny thing. Mm -hmm. how, how do you help people determine that or work, work through that? So before this podcast, we were chatting because yeah. I have yep. kids I'm teaching to drive right now. Yep. Right? So we know where we're headed. But they haven't really had a lot of experience behind the wheel, or maybe they're just not super comfortable yet. Yep. And we all know what overcorrection does. Right. Right? Not good things not a good always. Thing. Yeah. Sometimes when you come up against a barrier like the construction here in town, yeah. you have to take a detour. Right. And that's okay. Right. Because maybe that works even better. Right. Right? Right. So Helping communities really understand the, the biggest thing is, is that you have to know where you're going. Yep. Okay. First. Good. And yep. that's what is the problem. And yep. that's why we want to define that problem because that helps us identify where we're headed. Right. So if a community has a problem with, um, or de has to find their own problem yep. as a workforce issue, okay. right? Or a housing issue yep. or um, a business retention issue, whatever that is to that right. particular community, that's a great target. Yep. Now, how you get there is going to change all the time. And very seldom do we always pick the direct path, yep. the right path the first time. So we have to be able to shift. We have to be able to make those, those course corrections. Right. But it doesn't mean we throw everything out throw and go away. from housing right. to business retention. Right. It just means that maybe we take a little detour. So, so yeah, I, I, I really like what you're saying there. You're basically saying that at each step, you're going to kind of look around and go, okay, are we, are we, do we still see our goal in mind? Mm -hmm. We're not necessarily going to abandon this completely, but we're going to have to either move backwards or sideways or whatever to, to get to where we want to go. Right. But we thought we had a straight path and it's not there. Right. So uh, let's talk about the ultimate straight path, which is, and, and everybody's favorite thing, Give me money. You know, X, yeah, give, well, give me money is like the <laughs> ultimate straight path, right? Like money is, this, is, the, is uh -huh. the answer to all problems, right? Um, so, so let's talk about this. So we have 99 communities in Wyoming. Mm -hmm. Now, um, they, they all would say that they're different and they're all different, mm -hmm. right? I think we can all agree with that. They're all very different. Yeah. Um, but what happens a lot of times, I feel, is that we, we label a problem housing or workforce mm -hmm. or business retention. We say we have those problems. And X community just did this to solve that problem. So we should just do that to solve the problem. And that's like the ultimate shortcut yep. to fixing a housing problem, right? Well, you know, let's say, let's say it's my hometown of Rollins says, well, Cheyenne did this, yep. we should do this. Is, is that the right approach? So I, 
I love that because it's no, not necessarily, right? Likely not. Likely not. And, you know, I was just having some lunch with some good friends. We we're talking about parenting. Yep. Right? Same kids or same house, mm -hmm. same roles, same parents, same environment, same everything, vastly different. Yep. Right? Yep. So, um, one kid something works with, the other kid nothing works at all. Right. And you're starting from scratch. Yep. Right? Yep. They're still great kids. Mm -hmm. They're still amazingly talented and wonderful, yep. especially mine. Yeah. Um, Me too. Funny. You, isn't that funny? Yeah. It's yeah. weird. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> and, and, and Ben's behind the camera. Um, so all of these kids are amazing in their own right. Mm -hmm. But you can't approach things the same way right. because we know it doesn't work, right? right? Yep. That's why that community led idea is so incredibly important. Right. And that's why oftentimes we look at the process and then get out of the way right? because communities know best. What's best for them. For and them. and we, we say, what's the true problem in housing? Because the, the underlying problem yes. in housing may not be the same in Cheyenne as it is in Rollins. And yes. so looking at the underlying details of the problem mm -hmm. gives us some insights into what might work and what might not. It might be that they work exactly the same mm -hmm. and good. We can use the same problem or a solution to it. But it, if they're, if the underlying problems are vastly different, then it, it's a fool's errand to apply a solution right. to a problem that doesn't even exist. Absolutely. Right. Amen. And, and so, so speaking of that, I mean, one of the things that, um, again, it's the shortest paths or that we feel like it's the shortest path and the best path. So we adopt um, answers from, from other places and say, mm -hmm. that's what we should do. Talk a little bit about the kind of the broader scope of, of the idea of building local capacity and some of the work you've been doing mm -hmm. to, you know, kind of further your education on it and bring in some outside perspectives to, to really make it so that we're solving the right problems and we're bringing in the extra data and we're bringing in an outside perspective and we're using tools that have, have been mm -hmm. around for a long, long time and used in, in these ways. Can you tell us a little bit about the work you're doing with like building local capacity or state, building state capacity and com community development? Yes. Okay. Um, so we, at the Business Council, mm -hmm. um, I think people may have heard that we are working with Harvard mm -hmm. on a lot of this information and, yep. and really understanding and kind of picking apart, like yep. you mentioned, mm -hmm. well, we know we have a housing problem, but what does that mean? Right. Right? Right. Is it an infrastructure problem? Is it a price problem? Is it in one specific market? Is it in one specific part of the, the state? Right. You know, is it we can't get developers? Is it supply? I mean, there's so many things that it could be. Right. We really have to understand yeah. what those things are, yeah. whether it be housing or whatever, right? Right. So we've been working and doing some really cool on the ground work with Harvard, walking through how you pick apart a problem to really understand what some of those key issues may be. So is it regulatory environment, right? right that's impeding right. people being able to build houses or homes right. or affordable housing. So understanding what that is and is incredibly important. So that's been really, I think, eye opening. Mm -hmm. And I think we're excited to take that same process to communities so that they can learn how to pick apart a problem and understand if it is a business retention issue, again, what does that really does mean? mean? Yeah. Right. Yep. Um, and so that's uh, one tool yep. that we can use. We also are learning with um, Harvard's building state capabilities right. to understand the process itself. Now, the process, I think we could all recite it because mm -hmm. we know that that might be the right process to use, especially with complex problems. Right that don't have an easy answer or even one answer. answer. Right. Yep. Um, but it's getting started. And it's actually walking through the first time to see mm -hmm. how it works on the right. ground. And yep. then, oh, well, we could do this on our own, right? Yeah. So that's called PDIA. Okay. And it doesn't matter really what it's called because the process is super cool. The process yeah. is stuff that we all know. You start with understanding the problem, like yep. we've just talked about, right? Right. right. Then you pick something to do to get started. Yep. And it could be a little something 
Okay. Or it could be a big something. And right. again, that really depends on the people at the table. It depends right. on their resources. It depends on what that particular community has defined as one of their big constraints mm -hmm. to their economic health, yep. whatever that looks like for that community. Um, and then you test them out. Right. And you look around, like you mentioned. I mean, you've described the process, I think, right. a million times, right? right? Yeah. You look around. Do we need to make those course corrections? Do we not? Um, let's make those course corrections and let's try it again. Yeah. So it it's a way to build momentum, right. which then also builds support, okay. which also increases the community engagement and buy-in, yeah. yep. which then increases the size of your table, yep. right? Yep. Which then increases the impact mm -hmm. and it gets you toward where you'd like to go. Right. Just in right. even small steps, yeah. but at least you know you're going in the right direction. Yeah, and you've got and you've got a way to reproduce that, right? Yes. You can continue to do that. Um, so you mentioned um, you mentioned the word resources, uh -huh. and resources to a lot of people mean means money. Well, that would be right? great like, if we had infinite amounts infin of money. Infinite right? amount of uh, well, we could we could solve a lot of problems. They may not be the right ones, right? We still <laughs> could do true. that. Um, yeah. So and and I do think it's 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 pretty clear that. Um, one of the things that we're trying to do is build uh, what I call a, almost like a perpetual motion machine of economic development at a local level, right? So that it just begins to happen. Mm -hmm. We might help seed that or get that flywheel moving, but then it's going to move on its own with the local, with, with really their capabilities and their capacity. So we talk about resources a lot, and I think everybody thinks that that means money. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the things that was pretty eye-opening, and I sometimes feel the same way, Right. Don't get me wrong. We can utilize a lot of funding and in, in through our funding mechanisms yeah. in the state. But I think that there's this other level of resource and, and it has to do with maybe more of the philosophical resources or it maybe it's more about solving the problem without money. Mm -hmm. Like what are all of the non monetary problems that you have and then apply the money. Talk to me a little bit about that, especially as it relates to maybe the housing note that we've received or mm -hmm. some of the workforce items that we have and things like that. Is there. Do you see that in communities too, where people want to throw money on a problem or, you know, what they think is the problem right. first? Well, absolutely. Right. So then you have all of these grants mm -hmm. and we go for the money and we'll figure out how to use it later. Right. Sort right. of a thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I've heard that a lot. Have yeah. You? Yeah. <laughs> um, don't not a timer. Yeah. It, yeah. It happens. Right. right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and we just, again, without having a really good understanding of where we're headed, mm -hmm. we typically get caught up in the, the money part of it as the be all end all. If, if the money is the goal, you're likely not going to get where you want to go. Right. So we have to start thinking of as funding or money as one of the tools in the toolbox that we can use to get us where we need to go. Yeah. But again, I mean, we can't sell ourselves short here in our state. We are smart. Right. We're tenacious. Right. We are gritty. Yep. We get stuff done. We are passionate. We, you know, I put us up against any other communities in our country and we are going to hold our own or maybe even do a little bit better because right. I think small sometimes makes us mighty because right. we can make changes faster, right? right. We yeah. can adjust quicker yeah, and we can tap into the people because we know those people who mm -hmm. have skill sets. So yeah. just like when we were talking about community assets and right. really figuring out what those assets are. Right. The assets may be funding stream, but that's always later, right? right? That's a how right. you get stuff done. That's not a what you do. Right. But it's really figuring out not only your direction, but utilizing the people who have the skill sets, who okay. have the knowledge, who've been through a process before, mm -hmm. who've been successful at something. Maybe it's an accountant who has some really good ideas on how to better manage the funding yeah. that you already have. Right. Maybe it's an event planner who then understands how to, you know, work with tourism office to make an event mm -hmm. even more impactful regionally. Right. Um, one of the other big things that I've heard again and again across the state is a desire to collaborate. Right. Yep. Now we're fiercely independent on one hand, yes. but I can't tell you how many times I've heard that people want to collaborate. Yeah. Right. And they know the people to collaborate with. Yes. Right. Yeah. But again, it's just how do we how do we do that mm -hmm. 
so that we can work together right. and get more done. Yeah. And yeah. it's not necessarily a desire not to. Right. You know, I think it's just that we need to know how to right. collaborate. Right. So whether it be collaborating inside your community mm -hmm. or maybe even with a community that is close by. Right. What does that look like? Mm -hmm. So then you can, you know, kind of pull your resources. Yep. And again, that's not always money. Yeah. Right. That's right. It's the know-how. It's the commitment. It's the knowledge. It's the stuff you already have on the ground. Maybe you have a really cool event space yep. already there yep. that you could utilize in a different way. Yep. Um, just with, with brain power and wanting to do something a little different. Yeah. Yeah, that whole idea of collaborating and, and having communities complement one another mm -hmm. rather than compete against is, is a key component. And I think you're right. I think we have we all have this level of independence, mm -hmm. but I think the independence that Wyomingites feel as Wyomingites is is stronger than the than the folks maybe who are I, I'm from Laramie, you're from Cody, so we have that. It's like mm -hmm. we're we're on Team Wyoming. Absolutely. And and I think one of the one of the things that, that we do have that other states may not have is that um, we have a lot of things that tie us together. Mm -hmm. We have a really strong network where we're all a couple degrees of freedom away from each other. <laughs> and we have the ability, I think, to, um, you know, now if we can look at the problem and say, how might I solve it? In, and then think, who has solved something similar before? Or who are, who are assets around the state that I can work with? Mm -hmm. I think that's the real key. And, uh, you know, I think moving into, into the business council where you can see it from a high level, you can see all of these things that are happening and how people are working together. It's, it's real here. It's, it's not just sort of on paper. It, yeah. it is absolutely real. And, and I think that that's, as we can continue to you know, grow the leadership in our communities and the engagement, then I think that it begins to spread. It really does begin mm -hmm. to spread on its own. And we become the, maybe the connectors of those mm -hmm. things. And, and maybe not even the facilitators as much, and right? And then we work ourselves out of a job. work ourselves out of a job. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, Amber, I, I actually think that might be a great place to end of us yeah. working ourselves out of a job. Um, yeah, just not this month, though. That yeah, would, maybe okay. it, it'll be a while. Right. We'll, we'll probably find a new job to tackle after this, <laughs> I bet. So, uh, you know, Amber, thanks for sharing uh, all of your insight and, mm -hmm. and leadership wisdom because you have an awful lot and you brought a lot to the Business Council. Oh, thank and you. We just appreciate what you've done for us so far, and we're excited about what you're going to do next for the Wyoming communities. And um, thanks for taking some time to hang out with me on What's the Point. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah.